want you to take, put your hand in that person's hand beside you and squeeze some life in them. I know we had prayer earlier. I need to, to pray again. There's a warfare going on. A spiritual warfare. You have an enemy that does not like you, nor the God that you serve. I trust that you notice that even in these days, amen, because he knows that you have a future. And you must understand that your future is bright in God. You have the favor of God on your life. God has need of you and use of you. And so you have to know that. You're going to have to know how to put on the eyes of Jesus. <coughs> and see like Jesus sees. He sees you in your future. And your future is good is great in him it's not the time to retreat and draw back to the world it's the time to press it's the time that we want to ascend go upward and onward in heaven world and find yourself in God's presence daily David said, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud. And cry aloud. Don't cry inwardly. Get some stuff out of here. And cry aloud and he shall hear your voice. My voice. I feel him in here. My voice shall I hear in the morning. In the morning I will direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Get an upward gaze. Father, in Jesus' name, with my hand in my brother's hand, or even in my sister's hand. And God, we sense your anointing of God. You're not coming, you're not on you, you're already here. But with my hand in my brother's hand, in my sister's hand, cause us to know we're in the right place at the right time. Even in the midst of your people, and you're here as well. We sense you. We're touching, we're agreeing and touching here. And asking, and Lord, you said, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. We pray that God you'll magnify yourself in the midst of uh, your people. Whatever this on hold we have not received God we pray that God you release it today in the lives of that people God we know we're yet in a waiting state waiting patiently and while we're waiting God you're doing some things even in our lives Teach us how to wait on you and be of good courage and you will strengthen the hearts of your people. And so God, we bless you now. We ask that God, you'll turn loose my stammer and tongue and let me preach in the oracle of God. Speak loud and clear. We yet need directions from you. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. That's why we're here. So God get close share. Send a word to our waiting hearts today. We need strength not just for today, but on our tomorrows. Everything that we need, oh God, is in our future. And so God, we hope in you. Oh God, speak a word. Speak a word through here. We bind the hand of the enemy. We bind them hand and foot. In Jesus' name, God, have your supernatural way here. Lift oppression. Let sorrow and sigh and flee from us. Set healing in the atmosphere. 
we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let the folk know that in you in you we live and move and have our being move in this congregation in Jesus name have your way let the folk know when involved in a warfare we already have the victory the victory is in Jesus our Savior forever release in the house jobs and financial blessings we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ come through here Lord like a windstorm come through here like a rushing of a mighty wind we pray that God you make preaching easy give us here to hear uh, what you're saying today all of our steps in you uh, we pray in Jesus name we feel uh, your presence we sense the move uh, of the Holy Ghost and we thank you Lord uh, what you're doing uh, in the lives of your people uh, you're making up sick beds uh, and God we thank you uh, we love you God uh, hallelujah have your way in here we pray in the name uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, come on drop the hand and give God a praise uh, give God a, a clap uh, give it to him You're in the right place at the right time. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Can we do it together? Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. If God is good to you, why don't you clap your hands? Why don't you open your mouth? God bless you. You may have your seat in the Lord's presence and grace and peace be multiplied unto you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It is my our delight to be here and see you here. God is doing great things and we can see it out of our eyes today. We're praying for a certain folk to be here and God sent you here. And God sent you here for a reason. Amen. Get your Bible. We're going to uh, preach to you. We're doing a series. And the word might not make you shout. But to make you think. To think on your way. And we're in the word. We're in the word today. And amen. It's good to know what the word does for his people. Uh, please God, uh, through the foolishness of preaching, to save them that believe. Who's saved here today? Raise your hand, not a shame to say I'm saved. In fact, I'm saved, I'm sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm pushing, I'm pushing in this year. Amen. I, I would love to have a spirit-filled church. Yeah, that you know you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Listen, listen, and I'm going to do some preach teaching today to open your ears. But God is speaking because we need direction. And we need instruction based on what's coming down the pike. Where we encounter a life, you need to hear God prior to you. You go through some things just to know that God is with you to the end of the age. Are you hearing that? When you're born again, when you're born again, simple teaching. When you're born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the second person of the Godhead and you're born again. 
not a noise in it when you're born again, not a shout, not uh, fireworks going off in your head. That's not being, that's, a, that's an emotion. Yeah. The experience not based on emotion and the B2 organist won't last long. You want to make sure that the seed of God, the nature of God, falls on or into good ground. Meaning your heart, your heart must be uh, prepared to receive the nature of God in your heart, the soil of your spirit. When you're born again, you're born off. When you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you're filled with. Say born off. Filled with, yeah, two separate experiences that can happen in one setting. You can be saved and you can be sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost in one setting. Yeah, but I would love to have, uh, ask God for this, a spirit-filled church. Amen. When you're saved, you're fit for heaven. God writes your name in the Lamb's book of life. But if you intend to stay in the earth and God, you want God to use you, then you should be empowered. That's why they stood at Pentecost and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake in tongues. Glossia. They spoke in the languages based on the earth. In the earth, some folk speak in glossia, languages in the earth. Some folk are filled and they speak in a heavenly language, but they yet been baptized or filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with, filled with, same experience. Well, I've been baptized, I've been filled. Same experience, man, same thing happens. And so, uh, children and onward up, I would love to have a spirit-filled, on fire, loving God church. Yeah. Hey, get your Bible in your hand and we're going. It's the last installment, I hope on this series that God has, uh, we're living in perilous times. And uh, Satan can entertain you. Not only entertain you, if you're not careful, you can be possessed with a spirit that's not of God. Kind of hard to really, if not oppress or not possess, he can, if he's happy just to uh, antagonize you. He's, he's uh, happy to be a, a, a parasite. And is ag agonizing, attach himself to you. Those who oppress and oppress by the enemy. That's not a spirit that possesses them, but a spirit that attaches themselves to people whereas they're not happy. That can happen to you. I told you in time, in fact, I really mean this. If I come in here and I thought that would possess me, I would stop the whole service. So get this thing off me. When, when now? When now? The folk are suffering oppression uh, even today. You might be here to, even right now in this midst, but God wants to set you free. Then also, we want to work with God. God don't break in on people. He don't break in. He always honors you and your free will that you want God to do so to set me free. And he whom the Son set free is free indeed. Would you get your Bible? I feel like preaching here right now. But I want to just preach, teach if I can. Amen. Joshua chapter 6. Amen. From five verses, five, from verse one down to verse five, verse five. Five is the number of grace. 
God has been long suffering to us word. God has been merciful to, toward us. What you're doing, something we're doing breaks the heart of God. It grieves him, but God's grace is sufficient for us. God tolerates because he sees you in your future, what you're going to be. There's no one around you like God. Even your own husband or wife won't tolerate what God does based on our behavior. You know it's the truth. Uh, the divorce courts are filled with Christians, believers, getting divorces, and you, you, and they speak in tongues. Oh, oh my child, but in divorce court, getting divorces. There's no one in your life that tolerates you like God does. Just based on His grace alone. Can I just talk to you this morning? Just based on his grace alone. And the marriages are going to pieces because not, I'm not talking doubt. I'm not talking to make uh, this sound, uh, don't sound good, but it's the truth. And you know, people don't like to deal with truth no longer. They like the, they like the buy books, the love stories, and all that kind of mythical stories because people don't want to hear. Don't want to hear the truth. Well, I got truth for this moment. I'm going to speak some truth to you. So out of the book of Joshua, 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 Yeshua, Joshua, the conqueror, Joshua, the, the, the no-nonsense man, he's different from uh, Moses with a babysitter. He grieves over the people. Joshua had a whole different mind, a whole different personality. He was conquest all the well. Y'all hear that? That's how we're going to have to get our minds today to, and to know that I'm not accepting no defeat. Must tell you whatever you're going through. You want to grieve, but you know God has something for you to do. You know I might cry, my God, but victory is in my life. There's something that happened in your life. You're not careful, make you bitter. But what you went through comes to make you better and not bitter. Wish I had me a church in here. But in the book of Joshua, if I stay here, don't you stay with me. Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Hear this. None went out, and none came in. I'm going to say that again. None went out, and none came in. I want you to hold that, those words because it's very important and vital for us, even in your life, what's going on now. And I'll get to that. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the king thereof. If I spiritualize this message, just stay with me. And the mighty men of Balor, and ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. Repeat after me and say, God has instructions for victory. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets, the shofars of ram's horn, and the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast 
with the ram's horns, and we, when you shall hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout. Say shout. shout. You don't shout with your feet, you shout with your mouth. See, I don't shout with my feet. I shout with my mouth. You make the blast with your mouth. Yeah. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend. I told you we're not going backward. It's not the time to retreat. It's not the time to have a pity party. You must understand the voices. There are many voices that sound then at us. There's the voice of the enemy that want to cause us to withdraw and, and uh, take pity on ourselves. That's the wrong voice to hear to. Then the voices around you and people that speak doubt to you want to bring you where they're at. I refuse to go to that place. The doubt, the voice of doubt. I refuse to hear that voice. Watch your association. Watch when folk call you what you call for. Let's go in prayer so we can encourage one another. There's some folk that just plain gossipers. I'm gonna close my eyes. I'll open my eyes then. They're just messy. They they just rejoice in mess. You're not in the truth. Let them folk go. Let them go. Then is the voice of God. Can you have you learned? Have you have you learned? I'm gonna take my time and I'll get the text. I'm gonna just talk to you right here anyhow. Have you learned as yet to recognize the voice of God? Can you decipher your voice from the enemy's voice? The voice of the daughter and the voice of God. What you need to hear in this day and hour is the voice of God. So I must hear, come on, talk to me. So I must hear, in this hour, the voice of God. Life is that stick. I'm going through so much. Amen. My family and all that in my life, I need, I need to hear the voice of God. I need, and I have to hear the voice of God. I must walk, walk, I don't want to walk in wisdom after hearing the voice of God. For he's made unto us wisdom. Yes. Say, the Lord has made unto me. Come on, let's talk together. Say, the Lord has made unto me. Wisdom. Righteousness. Sanctification. And power. Say, the Lord, the voice of God is made unto me. Wisdom. And righteousness. Sanctification. And redemption. I'm not, it's imperative. Don't talk. That we hear God's voice because he's made unto us almost common daily wisdom. In my going up and in my coming. That's why you hear this, this, this morning and hear the voice of God for wisdom, not just today, but on your tomorrows. Uh, uh, forgive me. So I'm going to give you my subject matter. And, um, I might just deal with verse 1. I might just stay in verse 1, how God leads me. Every time I write a message, it changes. It changes. Though God remains the same, the flow of God changes. Based on the need of his people. He flows. The God that you serve, and I love him, he's known as the ancient of day. But he's just as young and, just as young and strong as he can be. Don't. Let the devil paint a picture. He's old and feeble. That's not God. He's, he's the same yesterday. Today and forever. He's the ageless one. He's the sovereign one. He's the strongest strong one. He ain't old and seen out. The devil is a liar. 
But God gave us a subject this morning that is entitled, Let's throw down our Jericho walls. My daughter said, won't you, won't you, let's tear down. She said, won't you, and tear down, throw down, tear down, pull down, whatever you're going to have to do. Let's throw down our Jericho walls. And we all have them. And we all have them. Amen. Don't let the walls that you're going through taller you. Uh, There's like giants. We have giants in our lives. And when you first came and, and dealt with them, they were very small, minute. But you, uh, you played with them. You played with them. You played. You entertained giants. Now the giants have outgrown you, outgrown, and they are they taller than you now because you entertain them in their infancy. Hello, giants, you giants of anger, giants because you haven't gone to a person and tell them I'm sorry. Now they master you. They're taller than you. When you should have dealt with them in their infancy. While they're getting midgets. You trying to cover them up that they're growing. They have grown you now. You're going to have to know how to deal with them. They're going to hinder our future unless you deal with the giants. Just like these walls. Let's put down our Jericho walls. Walls. Giants. Inhibitors. I want to minister within the confines of Joshua chapter 6. I just want to deal with verse 1 perhaps. Uh -huh, uh, to bring out some spiritual truths and revelations for us. There's some things in you that are yet uh, covered and hidden. You don't see. It's, it's amazing how we can see other folks and don't see our own selves. Amazing. You call folk and tell folk off and give your scripture and speak it in tongues. But the way you say it, there's no grace in your voice. There's no grace in your voice. Amen. Have you really sat down and let God show you? you? The Bible declares I feel like preaching, y'all. I'm not fussing, I'm just preaching. I'm in a different mode in my life. Amen. A different age now. Must preach to the father figure. And not to, not to spare you, but to spank you sometimes. So God can take us to a place where we belong in God. I uh, hear there must be progression. There must be a, a going up to God, not a going down. Would you have me a church in here this morning? Listen, uh, I told you about Jordan River. Uh, uh, it ran contrary where you're going. It always uh, was ascending, ascending, and the speed into it. It always emptied into the Dead Sea. That don't sound good, say the Dead Sea. Dead Sea, the place where even uh, around the Dead Sea, it was a lifeless place where things did not grow. You know, we don't belong in the Dead Sea. Amen. We, we're going high in God. And sometimes the upward journey is kind of high, but I'm yet going there. And, and you're going to the higher place. You must learn how to fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. Don't look around what you're going through. Yes, you're going through something for a reason. Yes, uh, the life that God has spoken, the Lord has forewarned you and said, in this life, you shall have tribulation. Trouble, and so you if just look at tribulation and make you bitter. Why they go through this? It'll make you bitter, want to cry. But the upward look, the upward gaze is always glorious. Where you're going in God, God has some strength for you. Where you're going in God, God has the freshness of himself. Where you're going in God, God will double your anointing. And he will empower you where you're going. And so your face must be set as the flint. 
Yeah. Someone don't like that. And sometimes it hurts what you're going. Sometimes it calls for a denial of things you could have. But you know, I don't want that. Yes, it's you that I want, but it's God who I need. Yes, it's you who I want to have, but it's God who I need. And so there's a sacrifice. It's telling the devil, no, God has something better than you. And you're good looking, you're fine. Y'all still here? Don't get ashy around the mouth now, just let me preach. And you, girl, you look, you got pretty legs, you got pretty eyes. He's tall, he's, he's tall and handsome. You're here, ladies? I lose my breath in his presence. No, all that can happen, but your focus is on God. What God has for you will surpass something that's momentarily. But have me a church in here that will feel good for the moment. Yeah. We all have some Jericho wall to face. If the Lord can bring us through our spiritual Red Seas and cross our Jordan rivers, there's no need to retreat. And God has brought you, he has comforted you. He made a way for you to escape some, some things and circumstances. You know that, and yet you're with the Lord because the hand of God is on your life. Not to mention how God has covered you, even in your mess. Come on, somebody. He caused some things not to happen because he covered you. Based on what God sees you, even in your future, he sees you at your best. He sees you going forth under God's anointing. He sees you in that fine house. So God will cover you. You didn't know that. Come on, somebody. The rendezvous didn't happen. I said the rendezvous did not happen because God covered you. Based on the hand of God, God covered you. God called you in your mother's womb. And God is keeping you, bringing you day by day to place in him. Where God will use you mightily. Say yes, Lord. I said, now, don't, don't follow me, David. You know. Yeah. The scripture yet remains true. When I pass you through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It was God that took you through that and will take you through life's problems and tribulations. You're going to do it because you belong to him. Jericho is not a place for the saints. Jericho is not the place for the saints. I'm going to spiritualize this. I'm going to spiritualize Jericho. It's not the place where the saints should be as to experience defeat, but the place where God wants to destroy and for us to experience victory. It's not the place of defeat, nor to be destroyed. Your Jericho, what you're going through now, if you make the right decision, is to experience victory. Say, victory is mine. Say, victory for me is on its way. Say that because some of them are going through the valley right now, and there is an overcast in your valley. What you ask God has not come past, come, come to pass as yet. But hold fast your profession, even in the valley. Yeah, we walk by faith and not by so. Who's praying for me here? Yeah, you're going through something, and the thing happened. And no, listen, don't, don't get nervous. 
Don't get distressed. Uh, don't get worried in the valley. If God gave you the promise, you're going to have to know that he's a promise keeper. So I have to endure hardship and endure the rain. Uh, endure the dark days while you're yet waiting on God. And hold to God's promise. I want to preach in here. Can I, can I bow every now and then some amens? Is that possible up in here? If I'm speaking truth to you every now and then, can I bow to amen? Uh, here, here. Can I bow to amen every now and then? If I'm speaking to you, if God is speaking to your circumstance, your, your present state right now, amen, don't worry. God's going to lift you from that state to a higher place. We're going upward and onward. We're going higher in God. There are some things you're going to have to encounter before you reach that place. Listen, 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 listen. I could never stand here as an apostle unless I had to experience some things in the church world. I ain't say on the job. I, I said in the church world. Let's understand that you all, say you all, are the people that makes preachers progress or they lead the whole ministry all together. And so God makes you based on the people you serve that you're under. If you can, if you can pass the 10 years, who's in here? Well, I'm gonna say it. With folk of color, then God said you did that, you went through that. Based on people, the experience, how you deal with people. Every person in here is not a pastor material. You want a pastor, the big seat and a man wearing nice vestments and robes and bringing you Kool-Aid and all the juice that will never work. But the trying of your faith and the people trying you makes you eligible to become a bishop. And folks, God spoke in my spirit. Folk told me they had to go through a process to stand here. The, um, the toleration. I'm sorry. Uh, people will test you. To see you're soft. You're soft. Yeah, I'm meek, but I'm not weak. But let me get back to much. I'm just going off here. Pray for me. Yeah. And so... Uh, the experience that God takes us through. Yeah, we, we, want, we want victory. Victory as in our minds or the walls of our minds. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and Verses 3 to 6, I hope I stay sober here behind this podium. I feel like preaching right now. It's going off, but, but that's not necessary. Yeah. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk, walk after flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Or our Jericho's. Jericho was a fortress or stronghold. Listen, a stronghold is a stronghold. A stronghold is simply a stronghold that Satan will cause to be in your mind. A stronghold. A stronghold of your mind. He's using your mind, he's using your imagination, he'll cripple you in your mind if you allow him to. And that hinders your, your, your future because he has set in your mind a stronghold. But the devil is a liar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the enemy can cause a stronghold in one's mind. Casting down the imagination, the scriptures, in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen, Christian warfare involves a bringing 
all our thoughts into alignment with the will of Christ. What you want to ask God, uh, Lord, I need, I want the mind of Christ. I want God's word working in my mind to combat what this devil is trying to set in my mind, a, a stronghold. And have my mind like a cobweb. Can't even think clear like I need to think. If you want God the words dwelling in you, it's, it's, it's warring on your behalf. It comes to your memory what to speak against the enemy. Are y'all hearing me this afternoon? Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you please say Jericho? Jericho, Jericho means, Jericho means his moon. Or moon city. It means moon or a moon city. It is written that Jericho became a cursed city. It was sentenced to utter destruction. Yeah. Jericho was called moon or luna. Notice in St. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 24, and I'm watching the time. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people. They were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic. See, loony. loony. Yeah, lunatic. That is, those that, that are those whose behavior was affected by the moon. This is true. This is true. You know, we have, I'm going to shut my mouth. You might be here right now. I don't know. No, 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 no. You have folk. Uh, uh, they have different ways on different days. They can switch up in the same day. You say, uh, who, who are you now? Who am I talking to? You know, they let things, let weather uh, change them. If it's, if it's cloudy, they act cloudy. Hello. They have different ways on different days. They have moments. Moments about that, 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 that change. They, they, and so uh, the lunatics were those who were affected by the moon. And we have that. We have that. We have, we have those kind of people. And so Jericho means uh, uh, moon, the moon city. Uh, Luna, the moon that could change people's behavior. Hello, we want to have the fruit of the Spirit working in us. One fruit is called uh, temperance. But you're the same, you're the same all day long. I, I dare to find yourself on this prayer that starts at 6 a.m. Because God is doing something not on our exterior, but God's working on our hearts. But the Bible said, Thou desirest truth in the inward part. See, God wants to come on the inside. Where, where, where He resides, where you reside. God, the Lord and you reside in your belly. The Holy Spirit and you reside on the inside of you. The Lord takes up residence in you, close to you, to deal with you. And the David, Thou desirest truth in the inward part. And even in my hidden part. Make me to know wisdom. There is again wisdom. Some folk, we, some, we, uh, we can act around people superficially. That we, we're saved and they're really saved. But you get around home among the real folk that know you, honey. But even here, it was saved at this time, God's most wonderful, she's a wonderful person. So, uh, yeah. Ooh. I know them, that's not the that person I know, because we, we put on a mask, put on a mask of hypocrisy, where fakers and shakers, that's far as it go, but now it's, it's time, to really, Lord search me, God search my heart, 
God work in me inwardly. If you find anything that should not be, take it out. Can I preach in here? Hmm. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, they brought people who, who, who were lunatics as well. So God can do something for them. Stay with me. It's believed there were two Jerichos. It's believed that there were two Jerichos in the Bible. The first Jericho was the accursed, desolate city. The second Jericho was called the sweet smell as an oasis. It was a fragrant place like this place should be. When you come up in here, the atmosphere must be conducive where God wants to work among us. This is the place we meet God. Though you can meet him in your own bedroom, this is corporate worship. We brought him with us to worship him and to receive from him. It's the place of praise and worship. Amen. You come, things that will fall off you. Weights and loads will fall off you. It's the place that prepares you for to tomorrow's. Because we're yet, we're yet in the world, not of the world. And so this is, we're all here going the same direction. You know we need to hear God. And our attention is on him. But God lift the weights, burdens off our shoulders and, and yokes off of our necks. Yes, yes, today I fell down, but oh God, today stand me on my feet so I can meet my tomorrow. This is that kind of place and setting where God wants to meet us. But had me a church in here and he wants to meet us. He wants to meet us. Yes. Yeah, I'm afraid. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 46, it seemed, I said, yet two Jebicos. And they came to Jericho. The first, the first, as, the first, and as he went out. Listen, the first Jericho was the one he came in and went out of Jericho with his disciples as though he was passing through to the second Jericho. The first one, the place of destruction and the haunted place, the place of desolation. The second plan was, was called the sweet smelling. Two Jerichos. The second place where it was uh, uh, Bartimaeus who sat by the wing because Jesus was eyes and heart was fixed towards Jerusalem. But uh, like we must be even here. Uh, it was the sect place that, that Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus is not a name. Bartimaeus, they called him because he was a bastard. Bartimaeus means the son of a polluted man. Are you hearing this? Everyone that has children, you don't father them. You have created a bastard. What fathers do, fathers take care of their children. Fathers give their children a name. Fathers clothe their children. Bartimaeus, he had some opposition against his own self. First of all, he was blind. Number two, number two, he was a beggar. Number three, he had no name. Born blind, number one. He was number two, a beggar, a low occupation. Are you still here? And number three, he was born blind. Three things against him. You know he had to call on Jesus. And I don't care what you're going through here this afternoon. If you esteem him, he'll elevate you. He called on, he called the right name. Uh, uh, Jesus, thou son of David. When he called that name, Jesus stopped the whole track. He stopped the whole entourage to give rent to this man that called him at the right time. If you call on Jesus at the right time, if you call on Jesus, he will. I'm 
answer your prayer. And when Jesus comes, he comes with healing. When Jesus can come with deliverance. I don't care how blind you are. You haven't seen nothing. Can't recognize the color of flowers. Never saw your mother's face. When Jesus touched you, oh God, how I mother, red flowers, red flowers, pink flowers, your eyes become open. When Jesus touches you, things begin to happen. I dare you now to Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. My God, there's power in that name. Here this afternoon, I feel like preaching here. I feel like reaching out to the Lord right now. So God can do something uh, that man cannot do. I just hear God say, uh, God can touch you in places uh, where man cannot even reach. Uh, God can do things. God can give the gift of life and the gift of the Holy Ghost. God can right and wrong in your life. Say yes, Lord. How many here know? How many here want God to throw down the walls that's in your life? Every barrier that Satan has created to stop your future. You're going up to experience victory. And the Lord has victory for us in our future. Eh? If you hold your place and position, eh? learn how to obey God. God wants us uh, obedience, uh, even in the now. Uh, when we're out here right now. Uh, I feel like swimming. Uh, I feel uh, the Holy Ghost uh, in this house here. Uh, in Jesus' name, uh, somebody. I said somebody in this place needs God in your life. You've been waiting, waiting a long time. The God stopped by you've been waiting and the walls seem high in your life you've been waiting on God a long time let me tell you I'll say it in confidence I'll say it in faith today might be your day God can break down the walls around you and in you He'll tear down uh, what the Satan tried. Uh, he's trying uh, to hinder your future. Uh, he's trying uh, to drown you. Uh, but the devil won't it preach. Uh, I'm sure if you notice, uh, but the devil is a liar. Uh, there's some things uh, you need some spiritual growth uh, and get over. Uh, get over uh, something that happened in your past. Uh, there's like a wall. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but God have God said uh, today. Say today. Say today eh, is my day eh, to break out of some things eh, for years eh, that he held me, eh, but the devil's a lie. Eh, hallelujah. Eh, the devil eh, held me fast, eh, but I broke through eh, and I'm free at last. Eh, he who. God knows I feel him in here. Eh, he whom uh, the sun set free uh, can be uh, free indeed. Uh, he's trying to block me. Uh, he's trying, he's trying, uh, he's trying uh, to hinder me. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but the devil, uh, God said, uh, God is saying here uh, this afternoon, uh, these walls, these walls, uh, and you tell yourself, uh, these walls uh, must come down. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, what are you going to do? What, 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 what can I do? What can uh, I do? Uh, what? cannot do huh? hallelujah eh? if you set your mind huh? and build some goals uh, in your life huh? what's in front of you huh? will be no more huh? these walls huh? coming down flat huh? you can go up 
it's time to go up. Say, it's time to ascend in the things of God. Whatever, whatever you need, God has it for you. It's already been prearranged. But oh God, you had the cross. What you've been through, what I've been through in life. Some things was not clear to me. The one thing I know, my ministry is yet incomplete. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going the Bible way. I'm going the suffering way. I'm going the believing way. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going with him. I messed it up. Listen, why are you going? Joshua, and hear this. Joshua, Yeshua, the human Joshua, he met on the plane between him and Jericho. He met en route to Jericho. Joshua, Joshua met Joshua. Oh, Yeshua met Yeshua on the way, on the plane. Mm. And Joshua walked towards Yeshua. It's time to find ourselves seeking God. Let me say it again. It's time for us to seek God. Who is this Yeshua? He was called the captain of the Lord of hosts. It was Christ pre-incarnated. He ran into Jesus. Why? I know that because when seeing him, he bowed down and worshiped him. Do you know him? Oh, I love you, Lord. Would you recognize him that stands at the door and knocks? Some folk had put him out of the church, out of life. Where that come from? The Lord says, what is it? He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Why is the Lord knocking at the door of a person he should be living in? You know why? We put him out the church. He's secondary. I love you, Lord. We mean secondary, secondary in our life, not first. It's behold, I stand. Look at, look at the grace of God. Not to destroy you, but come back in your life. Based on your need. See, God knows you need him. I don't know. I'm not going to sit down. Get, your, oh, get yourself back in God's house. Monk, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Invitation. If any man hear my voice, do you recognize the voice of God? When he speaks, when God speaks, get still. When God speaks to you, come to a complete stop. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him. And he or she with me, sup, sup. Supper is the last meal at the day. It's a well-prepared meal. Amen. It's the smothered, ooh, short ribs. It's the collard greens. I'm sorry. Okay, well, well. This the bill cutlet of Parmesan. Or it's the pot beef or cabbage and uh, whatever, whatever. It's your delight. It's supper is the last meal of the day. God comes in and spends time with you. 
dinner time, not just eating, but eating and talking. It conversations nice at supper. Are you hearing? The Jewish, Jewish friend, Jewish girl, she said, she asked her grandfather, said, said grandfather, he said that you're not talking. He said, when I eat, I eat. When I talk, I talk. But we'll have conversation sometime at supper. How, how was your day eating and that kind of stuff, passing bread, whatever. At supper time, the time for conversation. It's the time for fellowship. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, and the picture shows the knob, and the door has no knob, the knob's on the inside. That God, and you're saved here, God wants us to open the door. You, we're very private people. Very private. But God wants to come in your innermost being and, and just sup with you and help you that you will throw down the walls, every barrier we set up before him, they must come down. We're not transparent. So we go back home how we came, no burden, no lifting our hands and surrender God, be delivered with a personal. It's a mass come time. It's a mass. But God, who's real, wants to meet the real you and do something. God, would you stand on your feet? Would you stand?